Hello, this video is on rational functions. Um, you're going to be taking some notes and filling in the blanks as you go, so please do that and pause when needed. Um, let's start with a definition right away. So a rational function is a function that is a quotient of polynomials. Um, so biggest thing to remember, you're going to have a fraction. There's going to be something on the top, something on the bottom. Okay. So a couple different examples, y is equal to 2 divided by x. So pretty basic, notice x is in the bottom of your fraction. y is equal to 3 divided by 4 minus 2x, or even y is equal to 1 over x squared. So another term we're going to use is excluded value. You can see I usually shorten it to ev. It's any x value that makes the function undefined. Um, and if we think about this, if we have x in the bottom of our fraction, so like in the first example, y is equal to x divided by or excuse me, y is equal to 8 divided by x, x is in the bottom. So whatever x is, I'm dividing 8 by that. So I know that, let's say if I were to make x equal to 0, I would be trying to do y is equal to 8 divided by 0, and that's not possible. That makes my function undefined there. So the excluded value for y is equal to 8 divided by x is x is equal to 0. If we look at our other example, y is equal to 3 divided by x plus 3, um, just keep in mind we don't care about the top of the fraction right now, we care about the bottom because we can't divide by 0. So what I'm looking for is what x value would make the bottom 0. So in this case, um, I think most of you can figure out that if x was equal to negative 3, well negative 3 plus 3 gives us 0, so the excluded value there, the one that we can't use, is negative 3. If you ever get one that's a little bit harder, you can just take what's in the bottom of your fraction and then set it equal to zero, what we don't want it to be, and then solve for x. That's another way to get it if you're stuck or forget. Okay, a few more vocab words, and we're going to keep working with these, keep remembering that. So a discontinuous function is a graph that contains one or more jumps, breaks, or holes. So rational functions, if you look at the graph on the bottom, are discontinuous functions. You can see there's two parts to it, but they're disconnected. Um, there's kind of a gap between them. And that's because of those excluded values that we can't have. An asymptote goes along with that. It's a line that a curve approaches as you move towards infinity. So you can kind of bear with me as I try to sketch this on my iPad here. Um, you can see on this one that right along our x and y axis, I'm going to do a dashed line there. Um, those are our asymptotes right there, so that would be y is equal to 0 and x is equal to 0. You can see the pink lines that are graphed get really, really, really close to those imaginary dotted lines, but they never cross them. So with asymptotes, you're going to see our curves of our graph get really close to these asymptotes, but they're never going to touch them or cross them. So a rational function, here's the general form, y is equal to a divided by x minus b plus c. Um, a, b, and c are just constants. Uh, we just picked those letters. So you have two different types of asymptotes. A vertical asymptote, which would go up and down, is found at the excluded value or when x is equal to b. And a horizontal asymptote is found where y is equal to c. So let's do an example to think through that. So my example says y is equal to 1 divided by x plus 6. Then that whole thing subtracted by 3. So the vertical asymptote is at the excluded value. Now let's remember the excluded value comes from whatever makes the denominator 0. So in this case, I know that my asymptote, my vertical asymptote, I did VA there, would be negative 6. If I plug negative 6 in here, negative 6 plus 6, that would give me 0 which I can't have. My horizontal asymptote is actually just the number that's by itself. So this is my horizontal asymptote, that minus 3. y is equal to negative 3. So that's my asymptote um, that is running horizontally. So let's do some more with our asymptotes here. So y is equal to 1 divided by x minus 6. So in my head I'm thinking vertical asymptote, so the VA goes with the excluded value, excluded value goes with what makes this denominator 0, so that would be x is equal to 6. 
for my horizontal asymptote, I'm looking for a number that's added or subtracted out here by itself. Well, I don't have anything. It still exists. It just means that that asymptote says that <clears throat> is that y is equal to 0. Okay, another example, y is equal to 2 divided by 3x minus 10, and that whole thing then, minus 7. Vertical asymptote. This one's a little bit trickier because I have 3x minus 10 in the bottom, so I'm going to use that idea of taking that set any setting it equal to zero to help me out make sure I get it right and then I would divide by three so my vertical asymptote is that x is equal to ten thirds or three point three three horizontal asymptote simpler to find I'm looking for that number by itself out here so that would be y is equal to negative seven so there are always two asymptotes, a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote that we have to be aware of when we're graphing. So on to graphing, um, a couple steps that will make your life easier. Step one is to identify the asymptotes, which we just practiced doing. Step two is to graph the asymptotes just using a dashed line. So the asymptotes, they're there, um, but we just do a dashed line as it dashed line there to remind us that they exist and that we don't cross those lines. Step three is to make a table. You're going to choose x values on both sides of the asymptote. Um, it's going to be on both sides. Let's be specific here. I should have added it in of the vertical asymptote. All right, let's do some practice. So our first example says y is equal to 2 divided by x plus 1. So first step, find our asymptotes to kind of give us an idea of where our graph's going to be. So vertical asymptote, I'm looking for those excluded values in the bottom of my fraction. So bottom of the fraction is x plus 1. Vertical asymptote would have to be x is equal to negative 1. Um, there's nothing being added or subtracted by itself outside of that fraction. So then my horizontal just is y is equal to 0. I'm going to do my best to sketch these in. You guys can do it better than me on paper. So this is my horizontal asymptote. My graph won't cross that. And then I'm going to do my vertical asymptote. Now, it doesn't have to be dashed, so if it doesn't bother you to draw a solid line in there or to use a different color or something like that, that's totally fine with me. Just figure out what works for yourself. And then our next step was to pick points on each side of our vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote is that x is equal to negative 1. If I try to put that in my table, let's say I forgot, well, I'd have 2 divided by 0, which doesn't work. So I can't have x be negative 1. So let's say I want to start to the left of that. So let's try negative 2. So if I'm plugging that in my equation, I'd have 2 divided by negative 2 plus 1. So that would give me 2 over negative 1, which would be negative 2. So there's my first point. Um, let's do negative 3, so I'm still going to the left there. Then I would have 2 over negative 3 plus 1. So that would give me 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. Can do a couple more, so negative 4, give me neg or 2 over negative 4 plus 1. So that would be a negative two-thirds. So we will get some fractions and decimals here. And now let's flip to the other side and do other points. So we went to the left. We did negative two, negative three, negative four. Now let's go to the right and start with x is zero. That would give me two over one, which is two. Let's try one. That would give me two over two, which is one. And two would give me two-thirds. So just plug in those points in and now on my iPad it's hard to graph these and be super precise so do a better job on your paper. Let's start with negative 2, negative 2, okay, negative 3, negative 1, and negative 4, negative 2 thirds. So these are going to have a curve like our inverse functions do. And notice how I'm drawing it so my graph gets close to those asymptotes, but I'm never crossing it. Let's do our top part. So 0, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 2 thirds. Again, make yours more exact than mine, please. Oh, that one was way off. Let's try that again. 
Okay, just getting worse. Bear with my graph. That's why tables are good when you're working on an iPad. Uh, let's try example. So 1 over x minus 2 plus 4. Vertical asymptote. Okay, again, thinking excluded value. What makes the denominator 0? That would be x is equal to 2. And then my horizontal asymptote, number by itself over here, so y is equal to 4. And I'm going to draw those in. So y is equal to 4, about right there. And then x is equal to 2. Oops, let's fix that. All right, so I have an idea. Ooh, wait, was that a plus four or a minus four? Now I can't see my rating. I think that was a plus four. Oh, wait, yes, plus four. Okay, I just wanna make sure I had that right. So let's pick some x values. Um, we're not gonna do x is equal to two because that won't work. So let's start with one and zero to get us started. So if I plug in one, I get one over Let's see, 1 minus 2, negative 1, plus 4. So that gives me negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. If I plug in 0, I'm going to get 1 over negative 2 plus 4. So that's going to give me 3.5. Maybe I do a negative 1, so I get 1. Oh, this is going to give us some weird numbers. So we have negative 1 minus 2 is going to be negative three in the bottom plus four, so three and two thirds then. I'll do 3.67. Now let's go to the other side, so let's try three and four. If I plug three in, I get one over one plus four, so that gives me five. Oops, wrong spot. If I plug in four, I get one over two plus four. So 4.5, and let's go with that. Keep in mind that with these rational functions, those curves are gonna look, kind of follow the same general pattern. So if I have one, three, notice how that's kind of close to my asymptotes but not touching. Zero, 3.5, we're getting kind of closer and closer to that asymptote there. Mine is not very precise, but it's all right. So I kind of curve um, towards those asymptotes as I go towards infinity. And then 3, 5 be in there, and 4, 4.5. So I'm getting closer to that asymptote, but I shouldn't be touching it. So they kind of curve in towards the corners of the asymptote where they cross, but we don't touch. I'm sorry the graphs are a little messy. Hopefully from the tables that you wrote down and the graphs you have, you have a clearer idea of what these look like. Um, from here, you should be doing your book work and getting some practice in. If you have questions, please email me or come see me on Friday. Thanks.